So you have your brain that has roughly 80 billion plus neurons. Surprise, surprise, if you stretch the blood vessels, they are so long that they would actually circle the earth more than twice. Liver is the only organ which has the capability to grow back 100%. Hey guys, my name is Jitendra Chokse. I'm founder of Fitter. And like I discussed in my last video that I am going to be more active on YouTube creating full length videos. The idea is basically to start with absolute fundamentals and as you can probably already see by the setup I have this dummy and we are going to talk about basic physiology and anatomy in this module. How is this all connected to nutrition and training you might ask? The problem is that unless until you understand the basics of physiology, not necessarily anatomy, it's very easy for anybody to take you for a ride. The reason why a lot of people believe that glucose or insulin spikes are bad for you is primarily because they do not understand the basic physiology of how it all works. In a similar manner, a person can easily believe that X exercise is bad for you, Y exercise is bad for you because they do not understand the anatomy of your skeletal structure, your musculoskeletal structure right so it's very important for anybody to understand the basic structure basic anatomy basic physiology and then we'll move from there right so i will not go into details it's not that we are kind of becoming doctors or something we just want to learn the basics of nutrition and fitness just to be healthy and know enough so that nobody can fool us when it comes to these basic fundamentals okay so in this first let's start by understanding the difference between anatomy and physiology um, as you'd hear me saying this word again and again so when we talk about anatomy we talk about what for example the placement of the heart placement of what heart right so whenever we talk about where and what this is typically referred to as anatomy so what and where what and where what and where this is referred to as anatomy when we talk about these structures working together that is referred to as physiology how and why is physiology okay so anatomy is what and where and physiology is why and how so understanding the mechanism of how these structures work together is physiology. Understanding what are these structures and where are they in the body is referred to as anatomy, okay? Let's talk about the level of organization and sorry, I'm going to refer to this PPD because it's a long session. I want to make sure that there's a flow to it, okay? So now let's talk about the basic organization structure or how your body is organized. Think about a building. A building is made up of walls. Walls is basically made up of bricks. In a similar manner, everything in your body is made up of organs. Organs are made up of tissues. Tissues are made up of cells. So the basic fundamental unit of life in your body is basically a cell. Now, we are going to discuss the components of cell when we talk about cellular respiration and cellular metabolism, probably in the next chapter. But in this module, we'll just understand that cell is the basic unit of life. Everything you see here, each and everything is made up of cell. If you took a skin graft and put it under a microscope and you zoomed in, you'd see a structure of like you'd see different layers of the skin and as you go deeper and deeper you'd be able to see individual tissues and as you go deeper into the tissues you'd be able to see individual cells okay cells are typically referred to as sites c-y-t-e-s so you'd probably know about lymphocytes which is your cells of your lymph system right uh, you'd probably hear about erythrocytes right so erythrocytes are nothing but red blood cells right in a similar manner you would hear about probably melanocytes so cells which produce melanin right we would hear about chondrocytes you would hear about osteocytes so cells which create your bones right so all of these cells are different kinds of cells and when these cells combine together they form tissues tissues when they combine together they form different kinds of organs and structures okay so let's talk about the skeletal system this entire body is made up of different structures okay the fundamental structure or the base or the innermost structure which you can see through your naked eye is basically a skeletal system okay the skeletal system is basically we are talking about our bones okay so i have a little sample of bones for you so as you can see this is basically the bones in an arm so you have this humerus bone not looking so funny right now. It's a humerus bone. It is connected to radius and ulna, right? These are two bones of your forearm. 
and then which is connected to your finger bones and thumb bones right so these bones are connected to each other and the end area of these bones so this is the bone the end bony soft tissue at the end of the bone so that they don't rub against each other as referred to as cartilage and then these bones are further connected to muscles so the tissues that connect the muscles and the bones together are referred to as tendons okay and the muscles themselves are connected to your neuromuscular system or neurons each and every muscle is connected to your brain so let's assume that your brain sends a command to your skeletal system how does it really work how do you really move i'm thinking of getting up from the chair and taking a walk my brain is going to send the signals each and every neuron is connected to my muscles the muscles are going to move through contraction and restoring their position muscles contract and go back to their position right that's how the muscles work and these muscles when they contract they move the bones along with them and that's exactly how the human body moves now just for fyi the body has 206 bones if you are a grown adult usually a little higher if you are a kid but as you grow the bones fuse together and you end up with 206 bones major bones you do the skull this is your skull uh, which encompasses your brain this is the spinal column then you have your ribcage which protects your critical organs and then you have limbs of course which helps you in moving so the bones themselves right so this is your skeletal system now we talk about the muscular system so on top of the bones you have muscles which are connected to your bones with the help of tendons and these muscles themselves are connected with your brain and each and every muscle is connected to a neuron forming a neuromuscular junction right so there are roughly 600 muscles in your body and the strongest muscle you would be surprised to know this is actually your jaw muscles and the masseter is one of the strongest muscles in your body your entire body is filled with muscles so for example your heart is a muscle some of your organs are also have muscles and then on top of your bones you have muscles that's how everything moves because your muscles are connected to uh, your brain right so remember that your brain cannot directly connect your bones or it cannot move anything which does not have a muscle because like i said neuromuscular junction so your everything that needs to move in the body has to have muscles okay so there are muscles which are divided into two categories actually three categories so you have voluntary muscles then you have involuntary muscles involuntary muscles are muscles that move by themselves for example the heart muscle right so you have cardiac muscles these are involuntary muscles they do not require your explicit or an express command they will do their job on their own okay similarly you have smooth muscles which is your muscles which are again involuntary muscles in your intestines so they help with the peristalsis it's a process through which your food gets digested and we'll talk about peristalsis maybe sometime later but then you have the voluntary muscle so each and everything that you can control with the help of an explicit or an express command is basically referred to as voluntary muscle for example if i want to move my arm there it's a voluntary action i'm trying to control my arm right so these are voluntary muscles so voluntary muscles are muscles that require an explicit command and voluntary muscles are muscles that do not require an express or an explicit command they move by themselves and there are two types you have cardiac muscles muscles which are in your heart and then there are smooth muscles which are in other organs like your intestines and then we talk about the cardiovascular system right so let's have a look at the cardiovascular system so basically what's the function of cardiovascular system now understand if each and everything is made up of cells tissues right all of these cells are going to require certain amount of nutrients just like how humans and in reality when we talk about if we look at a macro level we require air we require food but at a micro level it's basically what requires air and food it's our cells right so cardiovascular system's primary job is to transport these nutrients to each and every cell in the body if the transport does not happen we'll die the cells will die meaning we will die right so you have two major pipes one is the food pipe and the other one is the vent pipe esophagus being the food pipe trachea being the air pipe through this air and food passes through we will discuss the details in a minute the air passes through your lungs the lungs have connections with the heart and basically what the lungs do is absorb oxygen from the air that you breathe in and pass this oxygen into the blood typically this blood is deoxygenated or unoxygenated blood and then this blood then goes to the heart and then the oxygenated blood from the heart gets distributed to each and every part in your body this is exactly the function of your cardiovascular system the heart typically beats about one lakh times in a day and uh, 
surprise, surprise, if you stretch the blood vessels, they are so long that they would actually circle the earth more than twice. That's how long these nerves would be if they were stressed out. That's how complicated and lengthy the whole system is, but you can imagine how it all fits inside this tiny human body. Then we talk about the digestive system, okay? So let me take this heart out for a minute. We don't need it for the time being. And as you can see, you have your food pipe and it connects all the way into your stomach. So let me take the liver out of the picture so I can show you how the digestion works, okay? So you have your food pipe. The food pipe is connected to your stomach. As you can see, this is the food pipe. It's connected to your stomach and your stomach basically is connected to your small intestines, then connected to your large intestines and basically everything exits from your urinary system and your anus. Right, so this is basically overview of a digestion system. Whenever you eat something, it travels through your food pipe, esophagus, goes to your stomach, goes into your small intestines, travels to your large intestine, and out from the system. Everything that needs to be absorbed either gets absorbed directly in the bloodstream at different intersections, different points, or eventually it will get absorbed from your small intestines and large intestines, okay? Then let me also talk about the urine system. Or the urinary system is basically you have kidneys and you have bladder and then you have your urethra. So basically what's the function of these kidneys? You can see these, these are two tiny kidneys and the main function of kidneys is basically to filter blood and you'd be surprised to know that every day kidneys filter roughly 200 liters of blood. That's a lot of blood, right? And kid kidneys filter out blood and other liquids in the system and basically when they filter it out, the urinary waste as then travels and then it goes out from your urethra. It gets stored in the bladder and then moves out through your urine. And then you have the reproductive system. I don't want to discuss this because I'm pretty sure nobody actually skipped it in their biology classes in school. Everybody knows everything about the reproductive system. And then what do we have here? We also have the nervous system. So let me talk about the nervous system in a bit. So you have your brain. It has roughly 80 billion plus neurons. And then the brain is basically connected to your vertebra. All right. So you have your brain and you have your spinal column, right? And this is referred to as a vertebra. So your brain and your spinal column, the spinal cord, is collectively referred to as CNS or central nervous system. As you can see, all the nerves, these are basically encompassed in the spinal column. These nerves and the brain nerves, they're all collectively referred to as CNS or central nervous system. Now, obviously these nerves cannot just be isolated here, right? So there are organs which are connected with this, but then you have your arms, you have your fingers, right? All the way till here, you can feel each and everything. So these nerves extend out to each and every peripheral organ, right? So that's why it's also referred to as the peripheral nervous system. So you have the CNS, which is your brain and you know your, your spinal column, your spine, and then you have the nerves, which are basically extending out, which is not part of your brain, not part of this, just an extension of this towards the periphery. It's referred to as the peripheral nervous system, okay? And yeah, so like I said, brain consists of almost 86 billion neurons and these nerve impulses, the electrical signals in your neurons and your brain can actually travel up to 120 meters per second, extremely fast. And then you have the endocrine system. So whenever you think hormone, whenever you discuss hormone, it's all part of the endocrine system. The endocrine system's primary function is basically to regulate everything in your body. Okay, whenever you talk about regulation, you have basically think about of an endocrine system as a traffic signaling mechanism, right? You have the stop, you have the go, you have the green, you have the red signal. Maybe it's an oversimplified version of endocrine system, but this is exactly what endocrine system is. You have different kinds of glands and at different stages in your life and after doing different kinds of things, your body releases the hormones and the release of these hormones basically work in tandem with each other and it basically signals different things for your body and basically it can mean your growth it can mean your metabolism it can mean reproduction all of these things happen through the endocrine system it's a signaling mechanism for everything that happens in your body okay so you have your pituitary gland you have your thyroid gland you have your pancreas you have your testes you have your adrenaline glands and all of these glands release different kinds of hormones insulin and glucagon for example are released by the pancreas right so basically this system works together with your with your brain your cns to maintain something what we refer to as homeostasis okay A great example of this would be let's say you know you're doing intense exercise right at what point of time without the help of endocrine system you would never know how to stop so let's say you are doing a very high intensity exercise and after a few seconds your adrenal glands will start releasing hormones like cortisol 
which will start breaking down muscles. And there will be substantial amount of lactate accumulation in your muscles, which will force you to stop, right? So without the adrenal gland, a person would not feel pain. A person would not know when to stop doing something, right? So whenever you do something, the glands basically control those actions to maintain homeostasis in your body. And that's why endocrine system is extremely important. Yep, that's pretty much it. I would love for you guys to have a look at this. You have your mouth, you have nose, you have air pipe, vent pipe, basically, and you have food pipe. So the food pipe is referred to as esophagus, air pipe is referred to as trachea. It goes through all the way, then we have your heart here, you have your lungs, you have the food pipe coming all the way, your stomach is connected here, small intestines, large intestines, you have kidneys, and you also have liver. Liver is extremely, also extremely important. It's not directly connected to your stomach, but it's connected to your intestines with the help of the portal vein. Now, basically anything that does not get fully metabolized in your small intestines or large intestines is basically goes to your liver. And then liver also has a huge role to play in your fat metabolism, right? So for example, fatty acid break breakdown, or gluconeogenesis, you know, and then you also have fatty acid synthesis, production of bile. This is all happening in the liver. And liver is an amazing organ. You know, liver has amazing regenerative capabilities. If I were to cut this liver and just leave 20% of it, it's the only organ which has the capability to grow back 100%. That's amazing, right? So liver is also important. Liver is typically placed here like this. And you have the stomach. So let me just try and place all the organs back in their place so you'll understand how and where these organs, okay? So you have the heart. Let me put the liver back in its place. But before that, I will have to fix the intestines. So you have the large intestines, you have the small intestines, okay? And let me put the stomach back in its place. Now, and I hope you guys were able to figure out where the kidneys were. Yeah, that's it. That's, here we go. Okay, so this is the full structure. And you can take a look at it. You also have lungs on top of it. And here we go. The idea of this session was to basically help you understand the basic physiology, the basic anatomy, not so much physiology as much as the anatomical part of it. Now, in the next session, if all this is clear, we'd probably take up cellular respiration and cellular metabolism. Once you understand cellular metabolism, a lot of concepts, especially the part where things like, why do we need creatine? Or why does L-carnitine doesn't work? or what exactly is the role of arginine, right? Or what does NADH or NAD, all of these things will get clear once we understand cellular metabolism and then metabolism of different kinds of fuel substrates in the body. So we'll cover that in the next session and then we'll build on top of these to learn and advance our knowledge with every passing week. I hope this session was helpful. I can understand if this was a little boring, but trust me, this is really important for you to understand the fundamentals. Without the fundamentals, you will not understand how things really work in the body. And so I hope you do watch this video end to end and walk away with some good knowledge. Thank you so much. I'll see you guys next week.